Hi, I'm Brian Carr, performance coach and consultant, and I wanted to take the opportunity today to cover something that seems to be a pretty big pain point when it comes to choosing a consultant, a facilitator, a coach, or a trainer. And it can be that decision itself. What do you need? I'm going to break it down for you in a little bit, and then I'll also have an article up on our website that you can reference for a little bit more detail on it. So let's break it down. Consulting is really where we begin. It's where the rubber meets the road. It's where you know there's something wrong, there's something off, there's an opportunity, but you just can't put your finger on it. A consultant will come in and help you match process and execution, and we'll look for the breakdown points. If there's no process in place, your consultant will help you design one. If there is one, but it's not being adhered to or followed, we're going to break down the why of how that's happening, and then help you figure out what we can do to correct it. All right, and that leads us right into coaching. Coaching is where we get live with the people of every level of what's going on, from management to the boots on the ground. That's where we're gonna have to get involved and start coaching the process that we seem to be missing on. Sometimes it's getting people to step out of their comfort zone. Sometimes it's finding the why, which is probably the most important part and the most important thing a coach can do. Because without a reason why, there's no process. And that leads us into facilitation. Sometimes you have to facilitate a discussion between two or even more people. Sometimes you're facilitating a classroom. And that's a huge difference. A good facilitator will take what would normally be a training session and bring it to life. And that means bringing it to life for everyone in the room, getting the discussions going, making sure that everyone is participating and getting something out of it. A good facilitator will even learn from the classroom while it's being facilitated. And let's not discount some good old-fashioned training. Training is still very valuable when there's a new skill to be taught or a skill that's been forgotten after a while. Training and repetition is a good way to get that balance going again. Like I always say, practice doesn't make perfect. Practice makes habits. And if you practice poorly, you develop poor habits. So that's why a good training and repetition can be helpful from time to time. All right. Well, I hope I've broken it down for you pretty simply. If you need some more detail, like I said, we're gonna have that article posted on our website for you. And if you have any questions after that, please reach out as we'll be happy to chat with you. Thanks for giving me a few minutes of your time and hopefully I'll see you soon.